Okay, so what we are going to do today is we are going to do the flow over cylinder in rectangular wind tunnel. So we'll just open the star CCM first. And in the star CCM, we will go to new simulation. We'll just click on that and click OK. And we'll expand the geometry. We'll create a 2D model. So click on 3D CAD models, click new. And yeah. Okay, so today we are going to do we are going to learn star CCM plus we are going to do 2D analysis of simple flow over the cylinder in rectangular wind tunnel. We are going to open the star CCM. In the star CCM we'll click on the new simulation, click OK. Yeah, we'll expand the geometry in 3D CAD models, we'll right click and we'll click on new. And we are going to create a 2D sketch. The thing about Star CCM is it only reads 3D model. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a 2D sketch. We are going to extrude it so that we can convert that 2D model in 3D model. Okay, so we are going to create the 2D on XY plane. So right click on XY plane and create set sketch. And that sketch will have the rectangular dim dimension to be 3 meters in X direction and 0.25 meters in y we have cylinder of 5 centimeter radius so let's say it's 1 meters from x direction 0.25 from y and it's 5 centimeters in radius click ok and to get the view you can select this option right over here and there you'll have the field view so it is still not sure. So let's say X is what is this? Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. The y is 0.5 meters. Yep, there you go. So click OK. Then once the sketch has been created, you can extrude it. And let's keep the distance to be less than 0 0.05 meters. Click OK. And there you have the three 3D of your rectangular wind tunnel. Okay, so now we are going to go to simulation again. We'll expand this 3D CAD model bodies, and let's body one should be this. Just right click on this and click new geometry part. Okay, and we have this surface. So in now that you can see in parts, there is just one default surface. But what we want is we want this to be various surfaces. So what we will do is we'll go to default. We'll right click on that and we have, as you can see, there are many options like split by pair, split by part curves, by contact, by angle. We'll go with by angle. You can just select the other and see what the difference is by yourself. Now the body default one would be my inlet, as in this would be my inlet, this section right here. So let's rename this to inlet. Default 2 is back body, so let's just say back wall. Default 3 is front body, so let's say front wall. Oh, sorry. Front wall. Default 4 is the cylinder, as you can see. So let's say right click rename it to cylinder default 5 is the bottom surface so say bottom wall default 6 is top wall so let's rename this to top wall default 7 is outlet so we'll rename this to outlet okay so now as you can see there are different surfaces like inlet is different surface and we have like seven sort of different surfaces so that's good so now instead of having one 3d model we are having multiple parts of that 3d model okay so let's zoom this out and yep so we we'll, what we'll do is we'll go to operations go to mesh and create batch for 2d meshing and that will just click OK. OK, now that you can see over here, there is a symbol, the yellow mark. That sign says that it has not been executed yet. So we'll right click on that and we'll click execute. 
we'll create one more operation new mesh automated mesh 2d select the body one make sure you select the body one go for polygonal measure prism layer measure and click ok now now that you have seen uh, now that you can see that for after doing best for 2d meshing you should see something like this so in that the red uh, color it means that whatever the meshing is going to happen is going to happen on this surface and the front wall the gray one is being ignored completely so now when you convert your 3d into 2d you know that there is going to be just one surface in z direction as in z would be zero right so now when the z is zero there's only back wall which remains the front wall goes away so your back wall would be the one where the meshing would be happening and the front wall would be ignored completely and those white marks are the boundary conditions so what we'll do is we'll right click on the body one we'll go to assign parts to region and make sure that create a boundary for each part surface because you want these each part surface to be different boundaries okay so click apply once and close it it will not close on its own so make sure that you click apply just once and then close it right away now to make sure that you have created the regions go to regions click on regions go to boundaries and make sure that all the boundaries are there okay so now that it is there we have created regions what we'll do is we'll create the meshing now so in the meshing there are two ways that you can do it you can either change the base size or you can change the other values because as you can see that uh, other values for example target surface size is given as percentage of base so other values are decided relative to base so what you can do is you can either change the base size or you can either change the other values individually so what you're going to do is the base size calculation is pretty complicated so what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and change the other other few individual values for example we will change the surface growth rate to be say 1.05 Whenever you change the value, make sure you press enter. And as you can see, the range is given from 1.0 to infinity. So the lowest you can go is one. And but when you go for one, it doesn't run somehow. I don't know why, but just make to make sure it runs properly. Just select a value a little higher than one, but you want it to be as low as possible. And the lowest is one. So let's go to number of prism layers and say 10. Prism layer stretching, say 1.2. Prism layer total thickness relative to base, say it's 1.05. Okay, now that is done. Now we want the final mesh to be around the cylinder wall, not over here or over here. So what we will do is we'll go to custom controls, create new surface control. In the surface control, we will select the regions where we do not want finer mesh. So everything except the cylinder would be selected over here. Click OK. Go to controls and disable the prism layers and click enter we'll create another surface control where we will just select the cylinder go to sorry oops I'm sorry again yeah make sure you just select the cylinder click OK expand this go to controls target surface size say custom enter and we'll go to values we'll Put this value absolute and we'll have 0 0.0015 meters okay now that we have given out the values we can execute this mesh so say execute and wait okay now that it is finished we can go to scenes over here and we can select mesh and you can see the finer meshes around the cylinder block okay so now prism layers are these layers right here so we said the 10 prism layers I guess so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so these are the prism layers if you want more finer mesh you can put 20 cylinder uh, sorry 20 prism layers and you'll have more of these circles around the cylinder so now I think this is enough for 2d so as you can see the mesh over here is not that fine but mesh around the cylinder is pretty fine so that's what we want because we are going to study flow over the cylinder so now that the meshing is done oh yeah save your file do not forget to save it okay every five seconds just save it so that it, you don't lose, lose your data okay flow so now the file has been saved what we are going to do uh, we are going to go to regions and give the type as in we have the boundaries right so we are going to give the type to the boundary for example the bottom wall as you can see over here 
we want that bottom wall to be symmetry plane because you want zero stress condition so click on symmetry plane enter we want cylinder to be wall we want inlet to be velocity inlet so let's go to velocity inlet outlet we want it to be pressure outlet so let's go and select pressure outlet top wall will again be the symmetry plane click enter that's good so now what you're going to do is we are going to go to continue and we're going to give the physics model so go right click on physics one select models and go to steady say liquid because we want to study the laminar flow for now so let's select liquid uh, segregated flow so now the difference between segregated and coupled flow is this incompressibility so basically we whenever there's incompressible we go for the segregated flow and whenever there's a compressibility we go for the coupled flow so for now we are handling the mark number is less than 0.3 ish so we will go for segregated flow let's go for constant density viscous region to be laminar and close it so now we'll expand this model we'll go to the liquid uh, material property as I said that we want this to be laminar region so we'll we'll change the dynamic viscosity to say 100 pascal seconds uh, we'll go to reference value make sure the reference pressure is atmospheric pressure which is there we'll go to initial conditions we'll put pressure initial pressure condition as uh, according to the problem is 102000 102,000 pascals velocity inlet velocity as you can see there's just two velocity components over here x and y because this is 2d we are going to have zero velocity in y direction and we're going to have 50 meters per second in x direction there you go once you have the physics values over here in the physics model we are going to change we are going to give the values in boundaries as well so as we know that the inlet condition is velocity inlet so we'll go to physics values We'll go to velocity magnitude and change it to 50 meters per second. And I think that's it. So once the values have been changed, what we can do is we can run the simulation. We can click on this guy right here, the running man. Just click on run. And we can see the residual is dropping. So now for good result what we want we want the residuals to be somewhere in order of 10 raised to minus 9 ish but this is just a 2d model so we want it to be as close to zero as possible that's the goal okay so we will just wait and we have we have given the stopping criteria to be thousand iterations so how you can change that is you can go to the stopping criteria right over here expand it and click on maximum steps you can change it to whatever you want we have so far given thousand so that's fine that should be good so we'll wait till the simulation is done so as you can see the residual is dropping to 1 into 10 raised to minus 8 which is pretty good The next thing what we want to do is we are going to learn uh, about the velocity distribution, pressure distribution, and um, vorticity, and we are also going to study the vector plots and streamlines as well. So now, as you can see, the thousand iterations have been achieved, and the final is one into ten raised to minus eleven, which is good. What we will do is we will go to the scenes over here. You can go to scenes over here, or you can click on this guy as well. So we'll go to scalar and we are going to expand the scenes scalar scenes one we are going to display click on scalar one click on scalar one and instead of automatic we'll select smooth field enter scalar field will uh, you can select whatever you want so let's study velocity first so we'll go to velocity magnitude okay so now that you can see that this is the velocity magnitude right over here okay uh, so this is the velocity magnitude you can uh, study the different um, uh, functions as well for example you can study total pressure you can study absolute pressure absolute total pressure or vorticity magnitude it's up to you okay so let's study the vector plots so just we'll go to scenes and we'll click vector and there we have the velocity vector over here as you can see there are like two this is a wake region so there are like two wake, uh, two vortices formation over here you can see the circulations so in order to study the circulation in better way we can go to displayers we can click on vector and 
we can go to animations and click on pulse as you can see there are a few vectors which are going over the cylinder this is just the animation issue so to fix that we can click on vector again we can go to just a second let me see where that option is we can go to clip now okay just a second display mode is cliff yeah I think that's yeah just click on the animation and then you'll see the animation like this over here so you can see that there is a wake so vortices is being formed over here and you can see that the most more concentration is on this region because we had finer mesh over this side and just give me a second let me see where that option is where you can actually reduce the length of this vector so that it is proper okay there's okay let's start from the basic click on vector scene let's select, select outline oh no select vector one okay parts this is the minimum maximum value color bar is here oh yeah go to glyph and in here you can select the absolute so you can see that it's proper and if you want to be screen size you can see there is no more flow out go, uh, as in no more vectors going over the cylinder so it's like this so it's just you have to select the vector scale as i said before so you can keep whatever you want it's up to you so now this is the S screen size so you can see the if you just zoom it in you will be able to see the what uh, the vorticity formation over here vortex formation as well so yep that's it and now you might want to plot the streamline so what you can do is you can go to derive part which is over here right click on that click new part streamlines select region to be inlet okay and say the unv resolution to be 10 10 no displayer create it will be created it will not close on its own so just click close and we can go to scenes go to displayers new displayers streamline but before you do let's just hide this thing okay streamlines will export in the parts will select the streamlines click OK and there you have the streamlines in the scalar field we can choose velocity again OK and there you go now we can play animation for this as well just click this play just change the animation to tracers and it was it would be off before just go to animation select tracers and select this play button over here and there you'll see oh wow it's going at the speed of light so might as well just change the speed how you can change it is go to animation stream settings you can actually select the cycle time so just play around with it and then you have like proper so let's say five that's too fast so let's say 30 so that's slow yeah so there you go So now that you can see there's a flow over the cylinder and the velocity profile which is somewhat constant over here it changes like this so yep that's it yep that's about the flow over the cylinder we can hide this and let's just have good uh, diagram over here yep this is cool so yeah we'll just play the animation and because it looks cool yep and that's it that's it about the simulation of flow over the cylinder 2D. Yep, thank you.